If you're currently struggling with some algae issues, doesn't matter which type of algae, I suggest you pay close attention to this video. Watch it all the way to the end. It's gonna be a good one. Okay, so exactly one year ago, I made a video that was titled, I got rid of LG after I did this one thing. And in that video, I talked about the one thing that made the most impact on my fight against LG, which was the lean dosing method. So basically dosing the bare minimum amount of liquid fertilizer. I still use this method today. I still recommend it to everybody just because it's super easy and it works really, really well. And basically what this method means is that you use a very nutrient rich substrate, preferably aqua soil, but root taps is okay as well. So the plants get the majority of their nutrients through their roots. And then you just supplement that a little bit with some liquid fertilizer. But by doing that, you basically make sure that there's almost no nutrients available in the water column. So there's no nutrients available to the algae as well. The reason I'm referring back to that old video is because that video performed really, really well. I think it got like 250,000 views or something, which is quite absurd. Usually my videos get only like 20,000 views. But it totally makes sense because we all just want a quick and easy solution to get rid of our algae issues. So today I'm doing another video just like that one. I think this one will be titled The only thing you have to do to get rid of algae, something like that. And before you rush to the comment sections and say that this is clickbait, just hear me out for a second. My goal is to help as many people get rid of their algae issues, just so they can get more enjoyment out of this hobby. Because I know how frustrating algae is, I still get algae once in a while myself. And I know that many people quit the planted tank hobby just because they can't get rid of their algae issues and just, you know, they just give up. And that's something I just really want to prevent. So if by making these clickbait titles, I can reach more people with my advice, then yeah, maybe that's what I have to do. Okay, so without wasting any more of your time, let's get to the topic of today's video. The only thing you have to do to get rid of algae is to focus on creating the right balance between light, CO2 and nutrients. That's all, that's all you have to do. If you can find the right balance between light, CO2 and nutrients, you're going to have an algae free requirement, guaranteed. Now don't immediately click away because you heard CO2 and nutrients and you think this video is only for high tech tanks with CO2 injection and fertilizers. No, this applies to everybody. Every tank has CO2 whether you're adding it manually or not. And every tank has nutrients as well. Fish poop is also nutrients. <laughs> Now unfortunately I cannot tell you exactly step by step how you can achieve balance in your plant and aquarium because every planted tank is a little bit different. I mean wherever you are in the world right now watching you probably have different water parameters, maybe you have very soft water, maybe you have very hard water and then it all works a little bit differently. You probably have different equipment as well. But trust me when I say this, after watching this video I'm pretty sure you're going to be a lot more confident in dealing with your own algae issues and you're going to be one step closer to having a lush beautiful planted tank. Well, I could just continue sitting on this chair and explain to you how to achieve balance in your aquarium, but I think that's a little bit boring. If I'll be watching that, I will probably fall asleep midway through the video. I think it's more interesting to kind of look at some examples. So I currently have 10 tanks up and running. Uh, some of them are perfectly balanced and have no algae at all. Some of them are not so perfectly balanced and have a little bit of algae. And some of them are also not balanced at all and have a lot of algae. I think this one on top is very interesting because this tank only has a light. It's very low tech doesn't even have a filter and it doesn't have CO2 injection, but yet it's perfectly balanced. Uh, plants are looking super healthy and there is close to no algae. There is only a little bit of algae on the glass here, especially in those hard to reach areas. And in case you're wondering about the fish, before anyone starts roasting me in the comment section that this is too small for fish, these guys are only in here temporarily. I was dealing with some small worms on the glass and I was afraid it might be planaria and I don't want to have any planaria in my shrimp tanks. So I just temporarily added these chili reservoirs, phoenix reservoirs, sorry, to help deal with those small worms and I think they're almost gone. So if we look at those three main elements for this tank, the light, the CO2 and the nutrients. The nutrients are coming mostly from the substrate. We have quite a thick layer of aquasol in here and the majority of the plants are also planted in the substrate. We just have a little bit of moss that is not in the substrate and the floating plants and there's a little bit of anubias in there as well. The rest of the plants are all taking the majority of the nutrients through their roots. In terms of liquid fertilizer, maybe dosing like one pump of potassium once a week and maybe one pump of all-in-one liquid fertilizer every two, three weeks. In terms of CO2, I'm not adding anything in here. So the only CO2 that is present in here is either coming from the gas exchange with the water surface. The, maybe my tap water has a little bit of CO2 in there, I don't know. 
and the rest is probably just from the fish and the shrimp respiration. So the CO2 levels are still very low in here, but apparently it's enough for these plants to grow beautifully. And actually this tank keeps surprising me quite a lot because I don't really have that much experience with these low tech tanks. Even though we, the light in here is a budget light, this is the Twinstar B series. So it's not super powerful, but I mean this tank is only 12, 13 liters. So it still is quite bright light. I would consider this a medium intensity light for this tank. Now I'm definitely kind of pushing the boundaries with this one. Um, it would probably be safer to reduce the light a little bit. So I suggest if you want to try this yourself to either reduce the light or add more floating plants. But I think the reason why this tank is so successful is mainly because we now have quite a bit of a, yeah, a healthy plant mass in here. There's a lot of plants in here. So that's why we, we can manage to keep the nutrients levels low. Okay, so it's now a few days later and I was just watching the footage back and I noticed that I kept saying that my nutrient levels are very low. But if you're watching this, you're probably wondering, okay, but what does low mean? What is low? So I'm going to do a watch test and show you the actual numbers. Okay, so here we have the test results for the uh, low-tech no-filter tank. So the only three nutrients that I'm testing is nitrate, phosphate and iron. So the first one here is the nitrate levels. And as you can see, this is like super yellow, which means there's basically no nitrate present in the water column. Next up, we have the phosphate. This one is actually surprisingly high. So as you can see, it's like super, super dark. So that means we probably have even more than what we can see on the, on the scale right here. So the phosphates are quite high. I didn't expect it to be honest. Probably has something to do with the fact that this aquarium doesn't have a filter. And lastly, the iron test. It's a little bit pinkish. So I would say it's somewhere around 0.25 milligrams per liter. I think this is a good example that you don't need a lot of fancy equipment. You don't need CO2 injection just to have a nice, beautiful, lush planted tank. Okay, so I showed you a balanced low-tech tank. Next, I'm going to show you a balanced high-tech tank. And after that, we'll take a look at the tanks that are not so balanced. So this tank right here is about four to five months old. And this one is very much high tech. It has an external filter. It has a much more powerful light than the previous one. And we also have CO2 injection. Besides that, the recipe is pretty much the same. So we again have a very neutron rich substrate. And in terms of liquid fertilizer, this one only gets a little bit of potassium, maybe two or three times per week. So we'll do another water test with this one as well. Just kind of take a look at the uh, the phosphate and the iron, because I'm, I know for sure the nitrate in here is going to be absolutely zero as well. I mean, just take a look at the color of the rotala. Yeah, nice and orange. So there's definitely low, low nitrates in here. Also, the blix has turned nice and red. Now, in terms of algae, there is just a tiny, tiny amount of black brush algae on the rocks over there. You might see a few small dots over there as well. But as you can see, it's like super light. It's, it's almost white. So that means it's, it's basically dead and I'm sure the, the shrimp or the snails will eat it soon. So besides that, there's literally no algae in this aquarium. And here we have the results for this tank. So the phosphate is definitely much lighter than the previous tank. So here we are at about mm, 0 0.5 milligrams per liter. And the iron is uh, basically the same as in the other tank. Okay, so these two tanks are pretty stable, but you might be wondering, would it be possible to upset the balance in these two tanks now? I think it's definitely possible, but only if we would make drastic changes. So for sure in both tanks, if we would increase the light, uh, maybe a longer photo period or even a stronger light, that would definitely give us algae issues. In the tank without CO2, if we would add more nutrients in here, we would definitely get algae because then we have light, we have a lot of nutrients, but we don't have CO2 or not a lot of CO2. So that would definitely give us algae. Um, in this tank, we have CO2 injection. So if we would add more nutrients in this tank, we will probably not get any algae, just a lot faster plant growth. And another way to upset the balance in this aquarium would be, of course, to remove the CO2. But we're not going to do that. So yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so these two tanks were pretty much picture perfect. If all my tanks could be like that, I'd be very happy, but maybe it would be a little bit boring as well. So one tank that is not very balanced is this one right here. This is my blue velvet shrimp tank. And I set this up as a high tech tank. So I was using a hang on back filter, a light and CO2 injection. But about a month ago, I've actually decided to remove the CO2. Basically the CO2 from a different tank ran out. Instead of getting a refill, I decided to remove the CO2 system from this aquarium because well, this aquarium is yeah, fully grown in. 
I don't need the plants to grow any faster anymore. So I thought, why not just remove the CO2 and see what happens. Of course, I knew that removing the CO2 would upset the balance in this aquarium. So the only thing I did here to basically make that transition happen is that I've added more floating plants. So more floating plants means less light for the plants. Plants will grow slower and they will need less CO2. And actually for the first three weeks that uh, went pretty well, I didn't really see any increase in algae. But over the past few days, I kind of noticed more and more algae appearing. So especially on the outflow from the hang in the back filter, you kind of see uh, lots of staghorn algae, especially on the tips from the, the hair grass and the Juncus ripens. And more down low, we also see some blackwash algae. So over here on the rock, you see some blackwash algae. Over there on this piece of wood, there's some blackwash algae. A little bit more over here, but that's it. I mean, it's not a whole lot, but there's definitely uh, more and more algae appearing. So we need to do something. Okay, so the nutrient levels are pretty consistent. We again have zero nitrates. The phosphates are quite dark again, very similar to the no filter tank. And the iron level is again, slightly pinkish. So you could say that this tank right here is exactly the same as the no filter tank. I mean, they both have the same light, they both have the same nutrient levels, and they both don't have CO2 injection. So why does this one have black brush algae and staghorn algae, and that one doesn't have any algae? Well, I think it's three things. First, of course, the transition from high tech to low tech. I mean, these plants were used to having CO2, and now all of a sudden there's barely any CO2 left. So just like, of course, that's going to trigger some algae. Another thing is actually the filter. So this tank has a filter. Um, the algae is mostly prominent in the flow of the filter. That's where we see most of the staghorn algae, which makes sense. I mean, the filter is bringing in more oxygen, and more oxygen also means less CO2. So on the left side, for example, there is not much flow, and we also don't really see any algae over there. And then the third thing, what was the third thing again? Oh yeah, the plants. So in the, in the no filter tank, we have a lot of fast growing plants. And then here we have a lot of slow growing plants. And you can see that most of the algae is on the hair grass, which is slow growing, and also on the Juncus ripens, which is also quite a slow growing plant. So how do we restore the balance in this aquarium? Well, we already know that the nutrient, nutrient levels are fine, so we don't need to make any changes there. So that, that leaves us with just the light and the CO2. Now I don't want to add the CO2 back into this aquarium, so that leaves us with just the light. The light is not, right now is on for eight hours from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. like all my other tanks. I don't want to really, really make any changes there, so the only thing we can do is to just add more floating plants. Adding more floating plants will reduce the light and also reduce the request for CO2, and that should hopefully resolve these algae issues. So this next thing might make everything a little bit more complicated, but I think it's important that we talk about this as well. Uh, to achieve balance also requires a little bit of patience. I mean, balance takes time, right? I think that's normal. A good example is these two tanks right here. They both look quite good right now, but I cleaned them last weekend and they were not looking that good. But the, both tanks are very new. They've only been set up for about a month and I knew I was doing everything right. I knew I had the right amount of light. I knew I was injecting enough CO2. The only thing I didn't have control over was the nutrients. Both tanks have a fresh Aquasol. Aquasol always releases a lot of nutrients in the beginning. So the nutrient levels in these both tanks were through the roof. And that's why we had some algae issues. But there's nothing we can do about it besides just keeping off with maintenance, keeping doing those water changes and just wait for those nutrient levels to stabilize. So I just did a water test. And as you can see right now, they are very similar to what we've seen in all the other tanks. So we're well on our way now to an algae free aquarium. It just takes a little bit of time. Now, one aquarium that I've struggled with a lot is this one right here. I think it took me six months to, <laughs> to balance this one. Um, I set it up around Christmas, it's now June, and I think this is the first one I can safely say that it has almost no algae, still has a little bit. Um, yeah, what went wrong here? Um, basically I was injecting enough CO2, but I just had too much light and too much nutrients. So in terms of the light, this aquarium sits yeah, next to a big window, so even though I was trying to keep the curtains closed as much as possible, it's not really realistic. Sometimes, you know, the curtains will be open and yeah, there's just too much light. Uh, not really a big deal as long as you keep the nutrient levels low. But another mistake that I made with this tank is that I've added way too many root caps in the substrate. So normally I just use just aqua soil, but somehow with this aquarium I went totally crazy with root taps as well. So we have a nutrient rich aqua soil and also root taps releasing a ton of nutrients. Yeah, so for, for the first few months the nutrient levels in this aquarium were just through the roof. 
and that combined with the uh, excess light from the, from the window is just causing too much algae in here. Okay, before we wrap up this video, I have two more tips to help you achieve balance in your aquarium. Tip number one is to see your light as your gas pedal in your car. So if you're sitting in your car and you only tap the gas pedal a little bit, you're not going to go very fast and you don't need a lot of fuel. Same thing in your aquarium. If you have very little light, your plants will not grow very fast and you don't need a lot of CO2 and nutrients. But the more light, the more gas you give, the more fuel, the more nutrients you need. So that's kind of a cool anal analogy, is that an analogy. Anyway, the second tip, it's not really a tip, it's more that plants need a lot less nutrients than you think. And I think the majority of algae problems that people have is just because they're dosing way too many nutrients, way too much fertilizer. So yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope it will be helpful. And see you guys next time. Take care.